in this video training, it's all about the consumer. So we refer to this as the, the staff consumer business profiling section. And so we're going to spend a lot of time profiling the consumer, looking at the different consumer characteristics and the consumer is going to be broken down in so much detail so that you understand the different characteristics that the consumer presents with when they come to your optometric practice. And so for all these years, optometrists have been referring to people that come to the eye care practices as patients. However, that is not necessarily the only case. Uh, the three distinct areas of optometry outline that there's an educational, a health and a retail component in optometry. That then explains that in fact, the people that are coming to our practices, shouldn't they be referred to as consumers? And then within those consumers, there are patients, customers, and clients. What do you mean, Obi, you may ask? Patients, that is, that is the person that has an eye problem that they need to be solved, right? They are usually that person that comes to the optometry practice for the very first time uh, to be seen by a healthcare professional. They currently don't have any visual problem uh, preceding that time that they come to the optometric practice. So they have never worn glasses, they have never had an eye examination. However, the customer, this is the person that currently may have a prescription, knows that they need visual correction or that there's a problem, uh, but they're not necessarily the person that has been coming to, to the very same optometric practice. Perhaps they got their pair of glasses elsewhere uh, and now they come into your practice for the very first time. And so it's not necessarily your guys uh, a customer it's just a customer in terms of they already wear glasses and now they're going to be getting the eyewear related needs from your individual uh, practice whereas the client is the person that keeps coming back to the same practice year after year for all the visual requirement and management solutions and so consumer profiling in an optometry practice is important in that it enables you the staff member to know what type of individual you are active, interacting with at any given point in time. And so let's look at a few examples in terms of the defining characteristics pertaining to the different consumers. So I hope you understand that there's the patient, first time individual with regards to IRA related needs. Customer, it could be someone that you have seen maybe once off before, they purchased something IRA related, whether it was from your practice or another practice. But the client is that person that keeps coming back to the same um, practice year after year. And so there are nine uh, characteristics that are defining the, the, the consumer. And I'll give the example in each and every single one of them as we go through this video training. The first one is they all have different questions. What do we mean by that? The, the question that the patient has is the diagnosis. And so you need to be specific and clear in outlining their problem so that they fully understand what it will take to fix it. Whereas the customer, it's more about the prognosis. You need to outline what their current prognosis is and detail the benefits the visual correction had. Okay, so they come into the practice and you probing them on why did they get the glasses the first time and what was the resultant effect of that. Now when they come into your guys practice or it's a follow-up visitor, you then explain that look, this is where you were at before, this is now where you are at. Is the vision getting worse? Is the vision getting better? What can we do to, to help the individual going forward? Whereas the client, the question that they have at the back of their mind, remember these are questions that they have at the back of their mind. They're not necessarily going to be saying, this is the question that I have. And the client then is the preparedness for their return. Uh, file needs to be put out already, benefits checked, management solutions should be already set out well in advance. So it's as if you were expecting them. And you're giving them that impression and they feel that you're expecting them and you are looking forward to having them at the practice. Uh, the, the second characteristics is answers or answer required the most by the patient is the causes. They want to know exactly why they have the problem, what causes it, how it can be solved and will it be solved permanently. Whereas the customer, it's the management options that may be available. And so, for example, any advanced management solutions that exist that can be an upgrade for the, for, for the, from the current management solution. Whereas the client, it's more about relationship building. Staff need to know what the client is wearing, what they were supposed to be wearing, how long they've been wearing it as a client, or how long they've been a client in that particular practice, and how often 
uh, have they been coming to that particular practice. So you need to know. So on the files, if th these are the files in the practice, very, very important that you've got like stickers on, your, on, your, on, on the file or on the computer that you can be able to identify, oh, this person actually has been with us for the last 10 years. You might say, but Obi, you can already check that on the system. You're missing the whole point. The whole key component about this is that you need to know that information in advance. You need to know that, wait a minute, uh, Mefrofa Nyauswald has been coming here for the last 15 years and this is how she prefers things to be done. Very, very important. You need to know that uh, Memukoni always prefers to be treated in a particular manner. This is what she's expecting from the practice when she comes for her appointment. She's expecting you to know her name. Even though you are a new staff member, that goes a long way for her. So when you have already indicated those small notes on the file, on the computer, or on the file, it helps you communicate much better with Memiko because she is expecting a certain level of service or a certain kind of engagement. And that why, that's why she keeps coming back. So those are things that will be important for Memiko So the clients, they, they, there's a way of communicating with them versus the, 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 per, the patient who walks into the practice for the very first time, you want to win them over. The client, you want to convince them that they made the right, I mean the customer, you want to convince them that they made the right call by coming into this new practice. And so those, how, you know, those are answers that they want or that they want uh, at the back of their mind, right? The number one need for the patient, remember that it was questions, diagnosis, answers most important for the patient was causes. Now, the number one need for the patient is the treatment plan. Will their medical aid pay for what they need? Staff must outline what they need and its importance versus what will be paid. So always communicate clinical features and benefits, value. Uh, how, what, will, what will be the result uh, if they go with what you're recommending? What will they be gaining if they go with what you'll be recommending? Versus what will they be losing if they go without it? And so the treatment plan needs to be well articulated. That's the number one need. If I go with this, this is what happens. If I don't go with this, this is what's going to happen. And you need to make sure that what they leave with is the best possible solution from the onset. It's going to be a bit of a challenge when you have to change it at a later stage. Whereas the customer, the number one need is the cost implications. They probably got what their medical aid paid for last time, right? And could afford what they and could not afford what they need. And so you need to be able to describe in detail the upgrade opportunities that exist and why you're upgrading them from the basic anti-reflective coating, for example, to the most advanced anti-reflective coating. Why are they changing from uh, a particular coating to another coating, a particular tint to another tint? Why are they getting contact lenses? Why are they whatever upgrade opportunity that exists, you need to be able to uh, detail the cost implications of that because perhaps the problem the prognosis remember customer question prognosis and so maybe the condition is getting worse so now the number one need that which you are now saying that they need to be upgraded onto what are the cost implications so that's a need that they have whereas the client VIP treatment uh, clients trust your products and services uh, by now and so they never stop you however you should never stop advising them on the different management solutions that are available. Technology keeps on increasing. Uh, there's always innovation taking place. So don't make the assumption that they know. Always communicate with them that, hey, would you consider a second pair? Would you consider a third or a fourth pair? Would you consider this tint? It's much better than the one that you have been having for the last 10 years and so forth. So always treat them like you lay the red carpet. Anyway, actually, it's, you have to lay the, the red carpet for all your patients, now more than ever, but the VIP, treatment that I'm referring to here is that the client, you don't want to always be emphasizing on new business and then neglecting the existing business that you've been having for the years. So you want to make sure that you're constantly growing that. So as you're introducing new things, don't forget to roll out that treatment. Make them feel like, wow, I don't get this anywhere else that I go. And that's, what, that's what's important for the client. You know, so it's, you're treating everyone the same, uh, service delivery, excellence, all of that, but the, the the VIP treatment that we're referring to here is that the client has that expectation at the back of their minds as a number one need to them when it comes to eye care. Uh, once, the patient solutions. Patients are skeptical, remember, about wearing any, skept, uh, any spectacles or contact lenses 
and they are relying on you to make informed decisions. Ensure they understand in detail what is wrong with them and what it will take for that problem to be solved. Whereas the customers, the follow-ups, customers must be informed about their management regimen in terms of wearing schedule, time frames, return dates, follow-up structure, and prognosis. So you, those are the things that you're constantly communicating with customers um, who have just poured this from the first time uh, or the second time from you. So you have to reiterate wearing schedules, time frames, uh, when you're going to follow up, when you should follow up, uh, prognosis. All of that is important uh, as a want for the customer. Whereas business development within the practice is what, our, is what the client wants. What do we mean by this? Clients want to see new frames, clean, clean the store, improve quality service delivery or excellence, increase staff performance, most importantly, strong leadership. And so are those characteristics being what is actually modeled in the practice that the client can easily identify with? So that's, what, that's a want for the client. The challenges though for a patient, for example, that's another characteristic, is the cost involved. Patients are not willing to pay more than what their medical aid will pay, but they usually need more than what the, the, the medical aid can pay for, correct? Staff needs to adequately explain the clinical benefits versus the financial capacity of the patient. And so you're talking value, you're talking clinical features and benefits, you're talking how they're going to experience the product, you're, you're talking about the, 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 the solution in relation to the problem that they have. Whereas with the customer, it's record keeping. In order to transition them into clients, their records must be in order. Staff needs to know what they are wearing, what their medical aid benefits are well in advance before they even come for their appointment. So, so you want to uh, capitalize on creating a new experience that is better than the previous experience uh, to convert them, to, for them to, especially if they bought something from you before and now they're coming for the second appointment in uh, two years later or a year later you want to now get them to buy it from you again and so when you remember their names when you know that okay this person got this and you made notes from before that wait a minute uh, when they came to us for the first time they had complained of the following from their previous experience and we now need to ensure that that which we said was going to happen has happened and capitalize on improving on that that's how you convert them from being customers to clients. Because when they are customer, they still it's still touch and go. They can still end up going elsewhere. For, for, so they came, they went elsewhere. They came to you. Now you need to make sure that they keep coming back to you. And so record keeping is very very important. Clients, be careful of these ones. They're very challenged, challenging in the sense that they're always wanting specialized deals and discounts, right? Uh, because they are your clients. And so clients appreciate credit when you give them the, some form of discounts on the extras that they need. So be very careful that you're not always discounting too much when it comes to uh, clients. And so we do, at a later stage, talk about, on our sales course, we talk about uh, discounting and, and pricing and quotations in more detail on our sales advancement course. But for the sake of this uh, training here, um, be very, very careful that you're not uh, shooting yourself in the foot by always discounting and giving deals to your clients. Always communicate value more than anything else and let them stick to you based on the value that they get the, 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 as opposed to the pricing that they get. Very, very important. What are the outcomes for the patient? It's the return date. Staff needs to be able to thoroughly explain to patients when they should return and how often. Very, very important. We take this for granted at times, hence we don't remind them accordingly. I'm sure you've experienced it, that a person now comes um, uh, to the thing and you ask them, when was the last time you had your eyes examined? And they're like, mm, this is another customer. Mm, I'm, I'm not sure. Maybe two or three years ago. When did you get your glasses? It was somewhere in Benoni. You know, they're not, they don't know the answer because that was that process of return date was not adequately done. No information was explained thoroughly in order for them to understand and whereas the customer it's service improvements they own the only acceptable standard of operation is excellent quality service by the practice nothing else nothing less so it's very very important that service delivery is at the forefront of converting the customer to becoming a client whereas a client outcomes is value what are the benefits for the clients to keep coming back to the practice what is, about, what is it about the business that sets you apart from all other practices that they could have went to? 
And so that's basically the, the difference that with outcomes of the patient, you've done everything. Now, when should they come back? That's an outcome. Client service improvement, because most probably in, or most, in most cases, they leave where they were because of either service delivery uh, or a bad experience, which is going back to service delivery. So if they can experience great service delivery in your practice as an outcome, you have won them over and they are easily going to be converted to becoming clients. Whereas with clients, make sure that the outcome is always the value that you are giving them. Very, very important. Financials is also now another characteristics for the patient. This is the benefits of the management plan. If patients don't understand what is wrong with their eyes, they will not understand what it will take to solve it. Whereas the financials for the customer is the features and benefits of the management options. Clinical versus financial management options need to be elaborated clearly to the customer. Very, very important. Whereas the clients, they will buy far from you. They'll buy far more than what they need and on regular intervals. So strong mutually beneficial relationships between the practice and the client will result in them being loyal to your business. Uh, a characteristic here is desire. Remember patients, they want quick solutions at low costs. So what do you need to do? Build a, re a trust relationship with the patient in a manner that they understand the new journey of you being the optometrist or the optometric practice and what it will involve. So lay the foundation with the patient from the onset understand that they need to understand that this is a journey this is not a once-off thing for all the visual related problems you guys become the practice of choice so from the onset have you communicated that value proposition from the onset in a manner that they can be able to understand and know that this is going to be a journey so that they can come back next time and then become a customer uh, a desire for a, a, a patient or a, uh, for a patient was the quick solution at low cost but for the customer it's a progressive solution at similar cost. Remember, they want the best, but they're not necessarily willing to pay for the best, right? Uh, and so your job is for you to take them from that mentality that they have to where you want them to be. And with the client, they want loyalty from you and they will be loyal to the business throughout. No matter how great your relationships are with the client, never compromise on the quality of product and service that you are rendering to them. Most importantly, stay innovative stay innovative always make sure that you don't take your clients for granted you know and understand what their desires are for both for all three uh, quick solutions at low cost make sure that they understand that hey but what you need is this if you can get them on what they need from the onset it's easier to them to stay on that whereas the customers service delivery followed by service uh, by uh, upgrades on their current management solutions so if you talk value it's easier then for them to move from what they got which was not what they needed to what they need and for them to still be willing to pay for it whereas the uh, client it's always the the loyalty aspect that and the innovation aspect that is very very important and finally as a characteristic do's the competence uh, no, number one rule be the best at what you do as a practice this is regarding the patient uh, with the customer is service delivery imp improvements number one rule go the extra mile in what the business does and then for the client it's relationship investment number one rule here make them feel great about themselves every time they come to your practice and so that's very very important that you understand the different there's actually nine characteristics that we detailed or profiled here pertaining to the consumer. Uh, at a later stage uh, in the training, we're going to profile the buying generation types. And what we mean by that is that there is also the um, buying generations in terms of your Gen X, Gen Y, or millennials, uh, baby boomers. We profile that. Then there's also the profiling that you need to understand pertaining to market segment in terms of there's a low income earners, middle income earners and uh, high income earners and then you also need to go further in terms of understanding the different consumer purchasing decisions that consumers make and so this is the foundation that we just wanted to lay in this video training understand that the nine characteristics that define the consumer and you, each of them are very very important pertaining to the patient the customer and the client so when you have that understanding when we discuss the buy generations market segments 
you then put that these characteristics into that uh, uh, groups that that we have just identified now and so to close off this video training consumer profiling in an optometry practice is critical for the following reasons uh, as a practice you will now be able to identify how to how to interact with the respective consumers who usually falls into this category please make sure i get what i need to see better but make sure it fits into my medical aid benefits right you're going to see all of that and so if you don't have an understanding of who the consumer is patient customer client you're going to struggle to interact with them more effectively but once you have that understanding of the breakdown that wait a minute this is the first time patient this is the first time visitor to the to the to the practice this is the characteristics that patient presents with this is how we exceed those expectations you win them over same thing with the customer same thing with the client uh, consumer profiling now you will be able as a staff to effectively and efficiently be able to interact with the different consumers with more ease and more appropriately service delivery will begin to improve further as productivity levels will now increase as a result of adequate pro consumer profiling uh, practices can now identify different easy to use techniques for consumer profiling such as uh, having stickers on the diff of, of different colors on the different files for identification purposes which we alluded to earlier on and you will be able to identify the upgrade potential on current management solutions that the consumer has and so that's why you're doing consumer profiling it's not a one-size-fits-all a uh, 55 year old high incoming uh, caucasian is going to be different from 22 year old high income african individual you see what i mean it's going to be different and so consumer profiling helps you understand that wait a minute this one was a first time visitor this one was a follow-up visitor what do we need to do to convert this person to becoming a customer what do we need to do to convert the customer to becoming a client how do we maintain the relationship with the client that's why this training was put in place here and so uh, that's basically why you need to understand the importance of consumer or business profiling very very important